He's a bona fide rock god, but perhaps less well known as an author. We'll be live with Queen's Brian May at the Times Cheltenham Literature Festival. Also coming up in the programme this morning, some of the biggest names from the world of culture, politics and sport are gathering at the Cheltenham Literature Festival. Our correspondent Nick Heim is among them. Morning. Yes, but not one of them, alas. Uh, I'm going to be here in the writer's room talking in the next half hour to one of those big names, Brian May, Dr Brian May, astrophysicist and Queen guitarist. What are we talking about? We're going to be talking about books in stereo, which is one of his private enthusiasms. Famous faces from the world of culture, politics and sport are gathering in Cheltenham this weekend for the town's 64th Literature Festival. The central theme of the year's event is memory and how it affects us and as individuals and as a society. Among those appearing over the next week are singer Keris Matthews, Doctor Who writer Stephen Moffat and Queen guitarist Brian May. Mm, our correspondent Nick Hyam is there for us this morning. Very good morning. Yes, indeed. Good morning. And I am sitting next to Brian May and his co-author, Denis Pellerin, of a book devoted to something called Diablerie, which are a personal enthusiasm of yours, Brian May. You've got uh, the slipcase of the book there. What are Diablerie? Devilments? They are a kind of devilment. Yes, they're little devils um, all telling a story from the 1860s in Paris. It sounds like it wouldn't be very relevant to us, but it's actually very much current in a way, but nobody in the 21st century has ever seen this material. Now, the key thing about these is that they're in stereo. You've tried to sort of copy the stereo effect on the we cover of the tried. slip. We haven't tried. We've bloody succeeded. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and they're, this they're... is a lenticular print, so it's a representation of what you would see in the book. But if you get the book, you have the owl view and you will see true Victorian stereo. Now, we've pulled out some of those images. Uh, if we show them now, there's one of Satan reviewing his guard of honour of um, skeletons. There's another one of a whole lot of skeletons sitting around in uh, Satan's gaming rooms, presumably going to hell very quickly because they're gambling. Denis Pellerin, um, these are remarkable partly because they were designed to be viewed in colour from the back and the sort of skeleton's eyes light up, don't they? That's right, yes. The, um, they, had, they devised a way of uh, showing the photos black and white and colour. So the, when the, the photo was frontlit, it appeared black and white, but uh, it, the, the paper was very thin and it was painted on the back. And so when you held it to the light, the, the, the colours, you know, the, you know, the light would, would um, appear, the colours would appear and, and the, the eyes were pierced and sometimes there was some coloured gel uh, on them, so uh, the eyes would appear to glow, and it was amazing, of course. Now, what these were was little clay models which were set up and photographed, and the idea is that when you view them through a special uh, viewer, they, you get this stereo effect. Um, they're also, Denny, um, fairly satirical, aren't they? Yes, they are. The, the, the trouble is, in front of the time, there was a censorship was uh, had been sought, and uh, and uh, they were trying to actually attack the regime, and so they did it in very subtle ways. And most of them actually es well escaped the censors, so uh, they didn't actually get the message, but most people did. <laughs> Brian, this isn't the first book you've published of Victorian stereo photographs. What's the appeal? That's right. It's been magic for me all my life, the fact that you can take two flat-looking pictures and turn them into some kind of window that you, could, you almost could walk through and touch these things. It's always been um, an, an absolute joy to me, you know, and so little of it is seen in this century. We, we hope to be a channel for this great work of art, really. You can see 3D on the TV screen and, and on the, obviously in, in, in the cinema now, like Avatar was, was the thing which brought it all back. But this is the original Victorian experience, and it's very immersive. You'd be surprised if you go into the viewer, into the book, um, you know, you're in the 1860s. And you get lost in these pictures. Uh, you'll have to take it from us, I'm afraid. Uh, when viewed through one of these uh, viewers, handy viewers, which comes with the book, it is quite a striking 3D effect. But for now, Dennis uh, Penera and uh, Brian May, thank you very much. Back to the studio. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you very much, particularly as well, uh, for all your company this morning and all your lovely pictures of your cardboard creation.